Hi, my name is Bobby Morgan, and I have the privilege of serving here at FOP. At FOP, our vision is to reach the hurting, repair the broken, restore the fallen, and rejoice in the process. We just want to say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you're watching from. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. We believe today God has a word for you. So let's jump into the message. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about preaching something for you today, and I want you to help me preach a sermon. Okay? Nathan said, Dad, you haven't preached in a month. And I was like, that's not true. I just haven't preached here in a month. I preached last night. I've preached. But I want to... Um, I want to share with you from the topic today, you know, Morgan Wallen, Post Malone might say it, but I want to use this as my, my title, I had some help. Tell your neighbor I had some help. I had some help. We're going to talk about angels today. And as I unpack this, you'll, you'll realize why I want help from you. I want to help you help you today. That by the time you leave this place today, it won't be like that was a good sermon or that was a good song. You will know that you got some help with you. You got backup. Amen. So we're going to talk about angels today. Amen. Somebody say amen. Act like you're excited about it. We're going to talk about angels. Father, bless this word. Speak to us in Jesus name. Amen. Trauma trains us. I was in Dillon, South Carolina just a few weeks ago, and I, one of our old farmers, Charlie Ray Smith, I'll never forget, as a young boy, he had a, a huge tobacco farm and, and hog farm. We'd go out to the pigs, and uh, I just loved going to his farm to hunt or whatever. He caught a horse fly one time, and I'd never seen anybody do this. He always had a straw in his mouth. And he took the straw out and he impaled the horse fly. Yeah, it was like gross, but if you're a guy, it's like cool. He impaled, he impaled the horse fly and he took it like you would take a paper airplane and he faced the barn and he just launched it and it flew straight into the barn where it hit and fell to the ground. I was like, that's cool. That was cool. So I can neither confirm nor deny that I have done that quite a few times since then. But trauma trains us. Trauma is farsighted where, where we do not see. Up close, it's blurry. And so sometimes we get caught going one direction because we're in such pain that we can't see to change. Do you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Over the last few weeks, we've been witnessing Israel under attack. They've always been under attack, but uh, Pastor Dave Jones just told us so good Sunday night, and I heard him all weekend, but Kippat Barzel, if I'm saying that right, I might be saying it wrong, but we call it the Iron Dome on October 2nd, Rosh Hashanah. Iran launched almost 200 missiles. These weren't your everyday um, run-of-the-mill missiles, these were subsonic, these were supersonic missiles, they should kill people, and none of them killed anybody. And they said, and, and the statisticians say it was a miracle that every one of them were shot down by the Iron Dome, but in Israel, they don't call it, I gave their, the Hebrew name earlier, they don't call it Iron Dome, Kippat Barzel, they call it the pillar of smoke. Now we know pillar of fire, but they're putting those together as Israel had a pillar of fire over them by night and pillar of a cloud by day. They call it the pillar cloud, the pillar cloud. And I believe, honestly, I believe it was more than technology. I believe it was angels. That all, because at best they said 70% won't get through, but all at once, 200. Amen? You need angelic help in days like today, in the days that we are living in. 
The Bible gives reference to over 300 times it speaks about angels. If you, you know, there are people that are always demon hunting, and I, I, I'm all about casting out devils, but they're always, they see devils everywhere. Devils, devils, devils. When's the last time they saw an angel? I'm talking about an angel of light, not of darkness, because only one third fail. Do you hear what I'm saying? Two thirds. If you can only see one third of something, two thirds, two thirds stayed and maintained and, and are powerfully protecting us even right now. Over 300 references. And then if you take the reference of Lord of Host, if you take the reference of hosts, there's 200 more references in the Bible of angels because that's that Chris Tomlin saying of angel armies. That's what the host is. That our Lord has a host of army angels that protect us and watch out for us. Billy Graham wrote a book way back in the 70s. I believe it was in the 70s, but it's called Angels. I remember looking at it. My dad had it, and I would try to read through it as a little boy. It was angels, but he said, according to Psalms 91, everybody in this room has two angels, at least, because Psalms 91 says, plural, that he will give his angels charge over you. Amen. And I'm not talking about a, a, a dizzy guy named Claret, Clarence, you know, it's an angel, like, it's a wonderful life. I'm talking about angels that excel in strength, that are powerful. Second Kings 19 says the story of Hezekiah who is besieged by the Assyrians and the besieged battle was one of the worst battles of attrition because they're starving you out. Some of you have been starved out of the word of God. You've been starved out of the anointing of God. You've been starved out from the blessing of God and the enemy just starves you out. That's what they do. They starve you out and then they consume you and they were all around and over one night the Bible said God released an angel and they woke up and 185,000 people were dead. Now I'm going to get controversial, okay? Because you go here and you wouldn't expect it any other way. Amen. But the modern church and the modern world, I'm going to just tell you because we fall into this not even knowing we're falling into it, but we have tried to feminize angels along with men. Amen. The Apostle Paul talked about men being emasculated. And if you don't know what that means, well, I'm not going to explain it to you, but the angels have been feminized all throughout Scripture. Now, I don't know. You know, you might have seen a vision and had a dream. That's okay. But I, I follow the Word of God. The Word of God only has an angel as a man, a big man, strong man. Every time you see an angel in the Bible, there's fear. Now, I know there's different levels. There's seraphim. Uh, there's different angels. But of the angels that are dispatched, there's always a fear that comes along with an angel. If, if you, you know, it actually, I, I'll just say, I'll just be honest with you. It kind of makes me mad when people relate an angel to a baby, you know, and I've eaten the QP burger up in Lima and that's kind of, you know, if you know anything about that, it's kind of weird. You go in there and there's little babies lined all around the wall, you know, the kinds that heads go like this, <laughs> blinky, you know, blinky. But I believe that the reason they, they, they've even tried to say like a baby, like an angel would be this little baby that floats on a cloud, is that that would be manageable. An angel's anything but manageable. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you'll say, wow, we do do this. We hear a lady sing and we say, she sounds like an angel. Or we see a little child, they look like an angel. And I'm just gonna tell you, wrong. I did a men's conference yesterday, and beside me, who also spoke, was a Navy SEAL. You know, we, if you were to see us size to size, there wasn't that much different. But in the 
back when we were talking, I, I said to Nathan, I said, we, it, it was like talking to somebody in another world. Like, like the way I, I would shoot dove is the way he has killed people. And, and I'm telling you, people that needed to be killed, and you might have a problem with that too, but check out your Bible. But he, he has killed people. I mean, he's so decorated. He leaned to the left, one side of, I mean, he had so many medals. His sleeve was so full of things. He, he, he was on so many tours. But it, you, you can tell. I, I could understand then why God looked at David and said, I'm going to let you buy the temple, but you, can't, you can build it, but you can't, you can't occupy it because there's too much blood on your hands. That, that is something. Thank God for those who have protected us and kept us safe and even things that we don't even know about. But I'm just going to tell you this. That looks more like an angel than anything you know. Because angels are powerful and angels are warring and angels are fighting on our behalf. I've got two scriptures and then you're going to preach. Are you ready? Hebrews 1.14. Hebrews 1.14 says, Inasmuch then as children have partaken in flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same death, that he might destroy he who has power over death. And that is not my scripture. What am I looking at? Uh, I'm at 214. No wonder. That's a good scripture. I love that scripture. As I was reading, I'm like, wait, what's going on here? 114. That was 214. 114 says, are they not ministering spirit? He's talking of angels sent forth to minister are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who inherit salvation? So for the saved, for non-saved, if you're not saved, this isn't about you. But if you're saved, if you're saved, this is about you. That God has sent angels to minister. What does that mean? Administer, minister, defend, fight for, whatever it needs to mean, that's what it means. For those who are saved, you qualify. Now, let me just ask you, if you know that you're saved, that God has forgiven you of your sins, just lift your hands right here, okay? And this is the thing about our salvation, is that none of you that lifted your hands earned that. God only saves people that don't deserve it. If you did, you're not saved. God only saves people that don't deserve it. And his ministering angels have come with the package. It comes with it. It's preloaded. It comes with it. When salvation comes, angels come. Mighty angels, powerful angels, strong angels. Psalms 103, 20. You'll like this. Let's go here real fast. Psalms 103, 20 says it like this. Bless the Lord, you who, his angels, who excelled in strength. That's where we get the word valiant, valiant. We don't use that word a lot, but the valiant. Angels are valiant. They're powerful. They excel in strength who do his word, heeding the voice. Why, why does it just say heeding his voice? Could have, could have stopped right there, but he doesn't. He doesn't say just heeding his voice. Of course, they would listen to God. Whatever he says, they would listen to God. But that's not what it says. It doesn't say they listen to God. It said they heed his voice. They heed the voice who do his word. They heed to the word of God. Psalms 107, 20, he sent his word. He healed them. He delivered them from all their destruction. In other words, what he is saying is you take this word of God. You take this. When you read this, it's the same as saying angels get up. Angels come on. Angels show up. That's what happens 
I've been around Dave Jones from England. They say, turn up, turn up, turn up. A a angels show up. Angels turn up. Angels come on. As soon as you read the word of God, that's what happens to you. Amen? So I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to stand to the side, and I've just, I've just kind of marked out some categories. And you're going to help me preach this. And we love you online, so this is what I want to say to you who are watching online. Read this out loud. Read this out loud. Let Satan, let darkness, let the devils hear what you're reading out loud. And when you're reading this out loud, you are doing what that scripture said in Psalms 103, verse 20, that those angels that excel in strength are ready to do his bidding at the release of his word. Are you ready to release his word? We're going to do, we're going to do quite a bit, okay? And if, you, if you, you're like me and you can't see that good at a distance, just mumble along like you're reading it. You know, be like one second behind the person saying, just say what they're saying. Okay, peace. We're going to talk about peace first. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing. Yeah, help me. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which... There you go. Well, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, as you said that, guess what? This, this room just filled with angels. And you at home, as you said that, or wherever you're at, work, this place just filled with angels. Why? Because the Bible said that at the mention of his word, they, they that excel in strength, not weak, anemic, not puny, not little baby angels, not, not angel, pretty angels with the Scottish accent. We're talking about angels that excel in strength and power just showed up. They say, you want peace? We got peace. Proverbs 16, verse 7. And of course, there's a lot more that I could give you, but I'm just trying to go through a few, okay? About 30 to be exact. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus. We haven't, we haven't moved, have we? Proverbs 16, verse 7. We just read that. It's okay. Angels are saying, duh. We just read that. We're here. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his... And that's something. And that's something. Quit telling God about your enemies. Amen. Tell Satan about your God. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes his enemies appear. Second Thessalonians 3, 16. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord with, be with you all. So we're, we're, all we're doing right now is, is, is deploying angels. That's what we're doing. We're going to talk about blessings. You say, well, are you one of those churches? Well, we're not going to talk about curses. We're going to talk about blessings. And, and we're going to get into prosperity in a minute. Amen. And I know some of you want me to preach on poverty, but we're going to preach on prosperity because my Bible doesn't have that part. Okay, blessings, Galatians 6 and 9. Oh, y'all are doing good. Now, you know you got angels around you right now. Say, so I'm going to help you do that. Because they're ministering spirit. You know what Elisha ministered to Elijah? You know what that meant? It meant for 20 years he washed his feet and hands. He ministered unto him. Angels right now are in this room. Amen? They're going to minister to you. Jeremiah 29 11. Most of you have this on your wall somewhere at home. Why do you think that God, God has to say, I know? Of course he knows. He's all-knowing. God's not smart. God's all-knowing. God's not strong. He's all-powerful. Why, why do you think he would say, I know? 
I think it's kind of like somebody trying to interject a thought that's not yours and you say, wait, I know what I'm saying. You might not know what I'm saying, but I know what I'm saying. Because the people say, well, God's after me. God hates me. God's upset with me. He said, I know my thoughts and I know my plans and they're not what you think they are. They are good and not evil. They're not evil and not good. They're good and not evil to give you a future and a hope. One says, one translation says, an expected end. What that means is I'm at the finish line. I've got the high five waiting on you, an expected end. Amen. Blessing, Psalms 112, verse 3. Y'all are doing great. That's you. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Amen. All I am is the mailman today. I'm just I'm giving you the mail. You read it. This is your mail. This, this belongs to you. What was that, Proverbs? No, that was Psalms. Proverbs 15, 6. Much. Amen. 2 Corinthians 6 and 10. And that walk of humility is strange, isn't it? That it's counterintuitive. The way up is down. And as we, as we bow low, more and more is added to us. Prosperity. Are you ready for this? Amen? Amen. Tell somebody, I'm ready for prosperity. I'm ready to be blessed. I'm not talking about you winning the lottery. I'm talking about God opening doors and avenues. You working hard. You, you being faithful in your giving to the Lord. You know, uh, three weeks ago, we, we helped build another wing in, in Africa of an orphanage. That's what I'm talking about. That's how that works. Amen. We've already bought a farm there. Prosperity, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. And God is able. Did one word stand out to you a lot? All, 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 all. God is able to make all, all, all grace abound towards you. All sufficiency and all things. Amen. Proverbs 16 and 3. Amen. You need mental prosperity too. You need confidence. Cast not away your confidence has great recompense. What does the word recompense? Recompensate. Has great recompense of reward. What does reward mean? It's what you get after you've done something good. Right? Cast not away your confidence, your mind. I've lost my place. What was that one? 16.3. Pro- Psalms 35.29. I always love this scripture. Let them shout for joy. Okay, you're not doing what the Bible said, though. I never read that passage once. Because it always says, and let them say continually. Whenever you see that in the Bible, read that part again. And let them say again and again, amen. Let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God takes pleasure in you being blessed. Because he knows that if my child is blessed, they're going to help other children to be blessed. Amen. Losers, losers, like there are people who have a lot, but they're still losers. Losers want other people to lose. Winners always want other people to win. My people are winners. Amen? Amen. Success, that's Psalms 35, 26. 
Psalms 115, this applies to your family. May the Lord make you increase. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. It goes on to say the highest of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to man. In other words, this is yours. Amen? When I pray about buildings or I pray about my home, I always look at a place and I say, Lord, is it mine? I want to know because he says the earth he has given unto men. Is that mine? Because there are some things that God doesn't want me to have. I know that. There are some things you don't want your children to have. Amen? And it may look good, but you don't want them to have that because you have something better for them. And is it mine is a good thing to ask the Lord. Is it mine? Amen? Philippians 4, 13. Through Christ, which strengthens me. Through Christ. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. All things are available. In him, we live, move, have our being. In him, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Everything is predicated upon where are you at? I'm in him. Where are you at? I'm in him. Uh, No standalones. You're in him. And the Bible says we are in Christ and Christ is in God. You talk about coverage. You talk about protection. And not to mention, we've got angels that are being deployed as we say these scriptures. Now we're going to talk about healing. And I just want to ask in this church, who needs healing? I want you to lift your hand. Okay. Let's lift it up for a little bit. Let everybody see you. Let everybody see you. Need healing. That's a lot of people that need healing. I want to see miracles. Don't you want to see miracles? I am, I, I am over it. I am over it. I'm 58 years old. I don't need you to leave this place and say, Pastor Matt preached really good. What does that matter? What does that change? I want to see a movement of God where people are saved, delivered, and healed. And the only thing that we can say is that God moved in. God was present. God was present. Amen. We need, we, need, we need some healing in this place. We need some healing in this place. In fact, I'm just going to ask you just to participate with me. Everybody just lifted your hand. I want you just to stand right here because we're, we're going to set you apart from everybody else right now. He's picking on us. Yes, I am. And the angels of heaven are moving right now all around. They're, they're here. They're here with you. The angels of heaven that excel in strength, Mike, they're powerful. They're mighty. Just keep coming. Come on, you guys. I know we get bottlenecked at these these areas right here. Let everybody. Nobody wants to be right here because you think I'll pick on you. Jackie, crawl up here. I'm not, no, I'm not going to pick on anybody. Come on in here close. Come on in here close. I'm going to pick on the people out here on the wings. Actually, wings is a good word. Malachi said, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. You know what that was talking about? The prayer show, those little strands, zit, zit. That's, that's the word, but the strands were knots, and they, were, they actually represent numerical numbers that represented the names of God. You remember the lady, 12 years? Did not get better, rather got worse. But she said within herself, if I could just touch. And those two out in the front and in the back, there's two, there's two specific ones that are longer than all the rest. There's four, two on each side that are long, and those are called the wings. And Malachi said, the son of righteousness shall come with healing in his wings. And the woman said, if I could just touch one of those wings. See, it's deeper than that. If I can just touch one of those wings, I know that I will be made whole. Are you guys ready to read with me? Okay, Isaiah 53, verse 5. Put that up. Isaiah 53, 
He was wounded for our transgressions. 53, 5. Isaiah 53, 5. We've frozen up. Let's do it together. Say it with me. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen. First Peter 2:24 says he, and I'm I'm going off my script here. So don't try to look for something I'm not giving you. 1 Peter 2.24 says, He who his own self bore our sin in his body. That on the cross, on the tree, he was wounded for our transgression. He said, by his stripes, you were healed. You were healed. Can we pick up in Psalms 107 and 20? Psalms 107 and 20. This is for all of you who are standing right here. He sent his word and healed them from home. That's what's happening right now. That's what we've been doing. That's what you've been participating in this morning. The word of God. But the word we know is sent down from heaven. I am the bread of heaven. Jesus Christ. He sent his word. Psalms 116 verse 8. We're going we're gonna to do a lot through Psalms here the next little bit. 116 verse 8, for you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. You delivered my soul from death. Amen. Psalms 118 verse 17. Psalms 118 verse 17. I shall. Come on, say it like you mean it. I shall not. Psalms 103, verse 2 and 3. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. It goes on to say, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness, satisfies thy mouth with good things, renews you like an eagle. Amen. That's what he does. That's what he does. Exodus 15, verse 26. All you need to remember is that last part. For I am the Lord who heals you. I am the Lord who heals Is Bethany Perry in here? Bethany. Josh, bring her on up here. There's, there's four people that I know of right now that have cancer that I'm believing for healing over their body. This mother has four, four babies, four, four little boys. Is that right? Four, four little boys. And is it stage four? Just found out a month ago. But you know who knew? God knew. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon. With his stripes, we are healed. We pray healing, Lord God. All over this church, Lord God, we pray healing, Lord God, over Bethany, over her body. We pray healing, Jesus, according to the stripes that you took upon your back, Lord. You paid, you purchased our healing at Calvary. You purchased our healing at Calvary. If you've sent children up to the upstairs on Sunday morning to be taught, I've had so many people say, she's the best teacher. She's the best teacher. You know what? The devil knows it too. And we defy you, Satan, in the name of Jesus and disease and sickness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Heal Beth. 
Hill Bethany. Thank you, Josh. We're not through. Psalms 30, verse 2. Oh, Lord. All of you right here who were right here, you know, who came down and said, I need healing. I want you just to say that out loud one more time. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. And you healed me. And you healed me. The angels are deployed when we read those scriptures. That's, that's Bible. That's what the Bible says, that the angels come to minister, to aid, to do his work, to do his bidding. The angels were deployed. You say, well, I need more than that. Okay. Daniel chapter 10. It's been 21 days. Daniel prayed. That's three sevens. Both of those numbers are prophetic. It's been 21 days. He's heard nothing. Nothing's changed. Listen, your miracle works out in the spiritual before it works out in the physical. You claim it. You just, you receive it. You receive it in advance. It's been 21 days and lo and behold, who shows up but an angel. And instead of going through, like, I've been, I've been crying out for 21 days. He talks about the fight that he's been engaged in. Because angels are fighters and they excel in strength. In other words, they win the battle. Satan was kicked out of heaven by what? An angel. And the angel says these words. Daniel, I have come for your words. All of you online in this room, when you spoke those words this morning, the angel shows up and said, I have come for your words. It's your words that brought me. It's your words that brought me. Because angels that excel in strength do his bidding. I'm sorry, I'm emotional right now. I'm kind of a wreck right now. We thank you, God. We praise you, Lord God, that you are watching out for us and that you love us. We thank you that you are the God in Exodus that heals all of our diseases. We thank you that you are the God that supernaturally brings provision and blessing. We thank you that you are the God that thinks more of us than we do of ourselves, And you know the thoughts you have towards us, that they are good and not evil. Bring a future and a hope. I pray hope over your people today. Hope over your people today. And Lord, I know you noticed, they preached a good sermon this morning. They preached a word over themselves this morning. And your word does not return unto you void, but it deploys angels. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Adam, sing this song. Let's worship. I'll build an altar. Purify my heart, purify my heart, make me holy, set me apart, purify my heart, purify my heart, come on, do that this morning. There's someone here 
that doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. You can't just be like he's a good person. God knows I love him. That doesn't work because you love other things. I know you love God, but you love your sin more because you've made a choice. But if you say this morning, I, I choose Jesus, I choose Jesus. Rescue me. Rescue me. I want all of those promises that all of those people were talking about. I want the angels of the Lord to come to my aid. I want to live eternally in the heavens. I want the power of God on my life. If you confess your sins, He is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The devil tells you you've got to earn it and he's a liar. He's a liar. It's already been purchased on a cross that you don't have to climb on. It's already been purchased. You repent, he receives you. You'll become a child of God today. Father, right now, we come before you. We ask you to forgive us of our sins. There are many. We ask you to cleanse us from unrighteousness. Heal our hearts. Create in us a new heart. Turn our life around, Lord. Make us new. What I'm doing right now is building an altar. You send the fire. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you. And if you've asked him to forgive you of your sins, listen, you can lift your hands boldly and say, I'm saved. You can be in here on Sunday and smell like Saturday and still say, I'm saved, I'm saved, I am saved by the blood of Jesus. Purify my heart, purify my heart. Make me holy, set me apart, Lord, purify my heart, purify my heart, and all, you bring the fire, Lord, purify my heart, purify my heart, make me holy. somebody a high five or shake somebody's hand or hug somebody's neck or hug hug somebody's hand and shake somebody's neck or do something this is the house of love God bless you may the Lord bless you may he cause his face to shine upon you may he be gracious unto you may he lift his countenance upon you may he give you peace in Jesus name Amen. Amen. In this message, we pray that it encouraged you. We also want to say thank you to our faithful partners and givers here at FOP. It's because of your generosity that this vision has been made possible. If you would like to partner with us, you can visit on our website. Also, make sure to like and subscribe and check out the other sermons. Now go out and have a blessed week.